Okay, welcome back, everyone. This is Bob the Canadian here with Game 2 of the Lords of Middle-Earth semifinals on the other side of the bracket. Uh, so this time we have Ari playing the Shadow side and Quadratic playing the Free People side. He starts with Boromir out and Gandalf Nari as guide. Uh, so Ari picks the Mustering Token Natural Appraiser. That's pretty universal across the board that we pick that. Um, so allocate one eye and off we go. Rolls two mores and... Well, you know, if the Fellowship's going to roll all movement, three eyes is not bad. Um, sorry, I'm still trying to say arms less, but it happens. Oh, that's cool. Uh, he separated Boromir and has House of the Stewards in hand turn one. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. That's fun. And King Brand, also a good card to start. David O'Donnell and Ring is mine. Also good cards. Not as useful turn one, but still strong cards. So let's see. No passing for the free peoples here off the start. So we move. So you definitely could crown Aragorn and move the Fellowship once this turn. That would be a reasonable choice for sure. But at the same time, after you've already separated Boromir, that also separating Strider, uh, not only are you painting the target very clearly on Gondor's back, you're also weakening the Fellowship. So it's uh, reasonable for sure to play it this way. Fellowship gets hit, step one, and revealed. So <laughs> wouldn't you know it? That's just, yeah, just the most fun you could possibly ask for. Uh, so out comes the Witch King, of course. Fellowship hides, and play the ring is mine. Yeah, makes sense to get the car the card cycling. Ooh, and Durin's Bane shows up. That is also a fun card to have early on. Fellowship moves again, and it's hit. And it's just a one. Uh, muster Saruman to war. Play House of the Stewards now. Interesting. I would be tempted to save that for, like, after the Shadow Player comes and besieges Minas Tirith. Now you're kind of, um, I don't know. You're letting them know exactly how strong you are, so they know to either not bother or to bring more reinforcements. But on the other hand, getting to play House of Stewards and draw these strategy cards now is pretty cool, because now you know what you have to work with and can play around that for the future. So that seems valid. So in comes Saruman, and we muster the elves down. I think I would have moved again. Uh, like, you, you want to kill off Gandalf here anyway, and... Well, actually, I guess before Saruman was in play, it was less desirable to kill off Gandalf. But also, like, yeah, I just, I if I'm sitting with the Witch King on me, I want to move more and hopefully get revealed so that I get to get away from the Witch King, uh, or at least make them waste dice moving the Witch King on top of me again. And then comes the Balrog. So, always feels good when you get that ten dice turn to start in Lords of Middle Earth. It just feels so bananas. Feels even worse if the Fellowship lost Gandalf and didn't get to get in a different keeper. Then it's literally ten dice to four on turn two. Just. Only one person is having fun. I guess we allocate one eye, roll one more. Another healthy movement turn. I imagine the free people's plan is definitely to move enough to kill Gandalf and bring him back with this Will of the West, uh, seeing as Saruman is in play. It's interesting having Day Without Dawn this early. So he does he does have three musters. So in theory, he could get all three, um, you know, he could get Sauron to war and the Southerns and Easterlings to war maybe in time to play Day Without Dawn if the Fear Peoples doesn't move fast enough. Uh, but they seem to be moving right off the bat and not getting hit. And yeah, we play Orc Patrol to... Oh yes, I see. If you if you get a reveal here, then that's very nice because then you make them pick between stopping in Moria and getting revealed multiple times probably or going the high pass route, which is inherently slower. And they do get revealed, so that's that's a very nice play. And you get the redraw from the Black Captain, so that's nice. Oh, I see, I see. They accidentally, uh, quote, accidentally undid the uh, card redraw. Uh, but handily, there's the redo function to make it happen again. Okay. Okay, so he loses Gandalf and goes the high pass route. Um, probably the right choice, I think. Maybe I'd just take the corruption, but then but then if you just take the corruption, then you have to spend your character to hide and then the will of the West or a ring to move again, and you might not get hit, or it might be a zero reveal. So uh, this is certainly the safer way to... Bring Gandalf and the White in, and then get to also hide and move again this turn. And if Sauron gets to war, then you could also use this muster to bring in Gladrill. So uh, looking strong for turn three that way. Whereas if you go the Moria route, like you're more likely to get an efficient kill for Gandalf, but you're also then sitting with the Balrog on top of you, which is just very scary stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, there's an elite with the Balrog. I hadn't even noticed. Uh -huh. Okay, so quadratic passes, shadow armies move. Uh, yeah, very natural to want to go after Lorien when you have uh, 
Durin's Bane in hand there. That's uh, it's very strong. Then you're shuffling armies. Yeah, how did the character die? Interesting. I would have hit him with the Palantir. Maybe he has a plan for that Palantir. Riders of Theoden, I guess? Anyway. Okay, so we continue moving armies. In comes Gandalf the White. Oh, I see, I see. He wants to bring in Gandalf the White up here and then play Fear of Fire Foes with it. That's pretty cool, too. Yeah. Okay, so Sauron comes to war. Then we play Fear of Fire Foes. Okay, yeah, Gandalf can get all the way to the Shire from there. I think it's better to put him in Great Havens because that way you're threatening Book of Mazarble too. From Rivendell, there's like you can't get to Ered Luin from Rivendell. So you might as well make your opponent wonder which one you have anyway. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I think there's only one route where you get to the Shire that way. It's Trollshaw's South Downs, Buckland, the Shire. If you go the north route, you don't quite. You get parked in Avendim. If you go south, you get parked in South Ered Luin. But if you go through Buckland, then you make it. Anyway, uh, so naturally he attacks Lorien. Probably bring in Galadriel, Elrond. Okay, uh, so I guess he just you know feels like the odds of Lorien just getting blown up in one shot here are pretty good, so he would rather just have Elrond's keeper die for next turn, which is reasonable for sure. He attacks Lorien and, and naturally plays Durin's Bane right off the start. Only gets one hit, so that's a bit bad luck. And one more hit, two hits back. Um, about fair, a little bit good luck for the free peoples. Press. He says no card. Yeah, that makes sense. You don't really want to play any of these cards here. Uh, maybe sudden strike. Maybe shield wall. No card. Yeah, just giving it up for dead. Oof. And then you roll like that. <laughs> just a very peaceful second round. So the other thing is, in this event, it kind of makes you wish you had put Galadriel there, though, because now he doesn't feel as pressured to, you know, press and try to finish off the siege right now because Galadriel isn't there. So at most, you'll need two muster dice next turn, one to put Galadriel there and then one to put an elite in there. Unless, of course, you pick up Caliborn's Galadriel or Power Too Great. So yeah, he has the freedom to stop on the siege and hope for a better combat card for next turn. Okay, so Axe and Bow, Thrand Wheels, Hill Trolls, and Chilog. Decent cards. Okay, so allocates one eye. Oh, the worst. Yeah. The worst case scenario of going from one ice to two with the keeper die. That always feels bad because that's like the worst percentage roll um, decrease to get from that. And of course, you just got Gandalf the White, so his keeper die is gone already. So, like, you can maybe get Galadriel and see if she holds on this turn, but it's uh, it doesn't feel great. I would try it anyway, but but you never know. Lorian might just get blown up and one shot one. Okay, so Fellowship moves and is safe. He plays Hill Trolls, which I think makes a lot of sense because Hill Trolls gets you those extra two elites, and now he could play Half Orcs and Goblin for the We Come to Kill effect and get a three rolled afterwards. Uh, so he used the Will of the West to kill the Balrog. Interesting. Yeah, I think that makes sense. You're, uh... And yet, his die was going to go away this turn anyway. But at the same time, it does rather hamstring the. The siege, you know, now he's out of leadership, so now he needs to pivot Nazgul there to, to attack. So I guess that is wasting some of his time. And now the Balrog's off the map, so he can't come and attack, you know, Rohan or Gondor or go up and harass the Fellowship. So, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so we play Black Captain Commands, which makes sense. It, it's a little bit of a shame not getting to put the Chief back on the Fellowship, but obviously you need the Black Captain there to actually attack with it. So it's more efficient militarily this way for sure. Oh, and he uses no card. Okay, I was expecting the we come to kill, but uh, but at the same time, it is only three regulars in there, and you do have several rounds of combat, so you you could certainly look at that as a waste of a card. Okay, and he rolls two sixes. So yeah, if you're just going to roll two sixes anyway, then then yeah, don't don't use the card. Zero hits back. Uh, presses, of course. No card. No card. And there's one hit. One hit. So yeah, that feels good. That feels good getting Lorian out of the way early for sure. Yeah, and the army's strong enough that you can head down to Rohan and cause problems there, too. That feels nice. Ah, nice. And now he gets to play Riders of Thayed and, and walk that army all the way to Helm's Deep. So Rohan will be ready for him. And neatly, this army, let's see, three army movement. Yep, that's enough that they can put uh, Woodland Realm under siege, though. So he is doing a good job of pressuring multiple targets. That's that's a real, that's a smart way to play as Shadow. You know, seeing the resources that the Free People's player has available and pressuring them so that they can only do so much, you know. 
yeah, tough choices here for sure. Okay, so now he attacks Fords of Aizen with the Witch King. And he gets his one hit. Uh, so now, of course, he's going to walk that army into Helm's Deep and at least put that one in the way in Old Forest Road. So that's, uh, so he doesn't have scouts, but he does have advantageous position and there's no leadership on this army. So there's a decent chance that, that regular could survive anyway and get to retreat to Woodland Realm. Ah, or the leadership could pivot. That's a thing, too. That makes... Um, oh, and going for Dale. Interesting. Okay. Oh, right, the North is at war from Fearfire Foes. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, no, of course you'd want to take out Dale then so that they can't muster in more. He gets this one hit and doesn't get a hit back. The uh, Free People's defenses are not doing amazing so far this time. Okay, so then you besiege Woodland Realm, of course. That all feels good. Feels a little bit risky having all these troops out of Fords of Eisen, but at the same time, like, you'd need We Prove the Swifter to get Gandalf all the way there, right, to get six movements to get him to Fangorn. Uh, so that would still give you one turn's heads up so you could still walk some armies back if you wanted to defend Saruman. Okay, so yeah, the Balrog die is gone now, of course, and so is Alrond's. Okay. Notably, he also has Gwai here, actually, so that could work to put a Hobbit from the Fellowship to Fangorn right now. So if this army did press ahead to besiege Helm's Deep, then you could do that, and that would be pretty scary. Mind you, he also doesn't have an Ant card in hand right now, of course, so never mind, that doesn't work at all. Uh -huh. Okay, so allocates one eye, rolls zero more, that's fantastic military stuff, and only one movement. So that feels that feels very good for the Shadow player. Uh, so naturally, the Free People's player plays Thrain Wheel right off the bat before they blow up Woodland Realm. G-Lob comes out. Oh, it feels nice to get to cycle those character cards. Can we start mustering up in Carrick? Let's see, what are the other options? You could get Gondor to war, but the Southrons aren't at war yet. So, yeah, not much threat has been made towards Gondor. So, um, you could also muster the Dwarves down, but they're not active. Yeah, that's that's probably the, the most current... Pain in the butt thing you could do to Shadow, anyways, probably mustering Carrick. Nice. So it brings in the Isengard Elite on Woodland Realm just to top up that leadership up to five. Act Woodland Realm, great host into advantageous position. Feels good for the Shadow player. I'd also just like to take a second to appreciate this game log file for letting me see the cards. This is a, a very nice change compared to last game where we were just guessing at what the heck was actually happening the whole time. Okay, so one six, one six back. Yeah, so plus one hit from Great Host. Uh, naturally presses. Shield wall. Oh, that feels bad. I forgot that he had King Brand and last turn with the dice shortage. You didn't get to play it uh, while that army came and stepped on Dale. That feels bad. Okay. Well, it's a very good shield wall, though. Two sixes canceling out one. That feels good. Two hits back. He does not press, which makes sense. I think like, it, it would feel a shame to lose the leadership from the Isengard elite when Thranduil has already been played, so there's no need to rush at the moment. Uh, like, obviously, you still need to rush some because you want to hurry up and get to 10 points before the Fellowship dunks, but but yeah, it's not very urgent right now this turn. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Just rolled three sixes. Easy. Problem solved. Uh, and only one hit back. Yeah. Yeah, not... Uh, the Confusion game was not strong against this army in Woodland Realm. They know what they're about. Okay, so turn four, five points already. That feels good for the Shadow player, all right. Uh, yeah, in comes Gothmog. That's good. Always like getting Gothmog on. Fellowship moves is safe. Southern's getting mustered. Condor takes a step down. That's good. Right, yeah, you know, seeing that the Southern's are getting mustered, then you start to get worried about Corsairs. And that's one of the stronger sides of Boromir is that not only does he make Minas Tirith grittier, he helps get Gondor to war so he can reinforce Dol Amroth. Armies move. Gondor finishes getting to war. I think I would have been tempted personally to use that as a movement to get this regular to Erebor. But maybe you... But I guess, like, these guys aren't at war, so that threat isn't immediate. I, I guess I just like doing that earlier rather than later. So as to... What do you call it? Just in case you don't have plenty of hybrid dice later. Okay. Armies... We're thinking about shuffling. We do go ahead and shuffle. 
Oh, that always feels so bad. I feel like you always pick up this card right after you finish moving troops over here. Like, it's still nice because you can still put two regulars on here, but it's a lot more efficient to also get the other two regulars from South Rune up there, you know? Anyway. And Cruel Weather. Always happy to see Cruel Weather. Um, Paths of the Woes is an end rage. So now we have an end card. So now we could think about cheeky uh, Gwai here and combo things. Okay, so we roll two more eyes. Only two movement. Well, I mean, two movement's not bad anyway. Let's see. So we muster an elite in Dol Amroth. I think that makes sense. Uh, so that if he does have Corsair, it's, yeah, you have officially mustered it to a full stronghold in time for that. Of course, we know he doesn't have Corsairs, but but he doesn't know that. So, yeah, now we play many kings. Muster another Oliphant in North Rune. So, yep, looking very well poised to finish taking the due line. Um, pass. Armies move. Leaving a full five regulars. Yeah, it always, it feels bad when the north is still alive enough to be a pest because it makes the odds of those rangers of the north being even more of a pain. So, like, if you left one to three regulars in Woodland Realm, there's a chance they could play rangers of the north and eliminate that whole army and bolster this army in Old Forest Road. But if you leave five regulars, like, they're probably only going to get one hit anyway, so that's a very difficult army to take back. And since you have a full strength army here anyway, you might as well just, you know, Quash all hope and leave Wooden Realm well defended. That makes a lot of sense. Ari moves and gets hit. Uh, sorry, quadratic moves. Ari, Ari's the one who's rolling. That's what I was looking at. Okay, we're thinking about how to best to move armies. Yeah. Interesting that we bring the Isengard regular to Moria. Maybe he's just uh, shoring up in advance in case we're... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Some... Uh, some free people's military things could be rather cheeky at the moment. Uh, since the North is at war and the Elves are at war, these Elves could walk into Moria and this Old Forest Road regular could walk into Belgoldur, in theory. So, uh, yeah, it feels nice to shore those up, especially if you don't really have anything you're up to at the moment. Oh, cool. Okay, so we play... Oh, no. Oh, no, this is a horror movie watching this right now. He plays Gwai here to put... Strider in Minas Tirith, but all the Shadow Nations are at war, and we know that Day Without Dawn is in hand. This is, oh, uh, this is, a, it's a horror movie. It's a tragedy. It's not a romance. It's everything else. Uh, yeah, feel sad. Feel sad. I've I've been on both. Well, yeah, no, I have been on both ends of that. It's very sad. Yeah. Unless you're the Shadow player, of course, then it's very happy. But you know, tomato, tomato. Okay, so he attacks Erebor. Makes sense. Okay, so the Fellowship is two steps ahead, so actually an old forest road. So they're still five steps away from Mordor, and Shadow is close. Like, if those these sieges go well, then they're at nine points this turn. So that's uh, going well for the Shadow anyway. Oh, yeah, there's that uh, Rangers of the North card I was talking about. Very much validating the existence of the five regulars in Wooden Realm. Okay. Ah, but just in time to slow down the military, we roll three more eyes, so. And three movement for the free peoples. Uh, it's good that they got a will to west anyway, so they can crown Aragorn uh, in any chance. So I wonder with the crowning of Aragorn, is he is he actually planning on doing a, like trying to sneak a free people's military victory because he he knows he's too far behind, or or is he just hoping for extra strength for defending? Which. It's tough because Gondor isn't really a target, so Aragorn doesn't have too much to claim. Like, he could come up and fight for Helm's Deep, maybe, but I don't know. That's a long way to go, and you don't have that many dice as the free people. I mean, you have somewhat more now since you have Aragorn, but yeah. Anyway. Okay, so he draws a card, Orc multiplying again. <laughs> oh man, this is such a nightmare. If you are going to go for a free people's military victory, he has Orcs multiplying and Pits of Mordor in hand. Like, just good luck, fam. Good luck. Okay, he passes. Uh, here comes the Pits of Mordor. Yeah, yeah he, he's still on the wavelength of being worried about free people's military, so he just uses that to make sure there's a unit in every stronghold, uh, every stronghold except Orthanc right now, anyway. Okay, so here come the Rangers of the North attacking Dale. Yeah, again, going for the uh, annoying fly aspect, like they'll probably get one hit and kill that guy in Dale, but he misses and doesn't. Uh, so at least he gets the... Uh, leader and elite in Old Forest Road, so that's something anyway. Um, so he attacks Erebor. I might have been tempted to attack Iron Hills first, just so we can't muster there, but but is that really that scary? It's not really that scary. Uh, okay. 
So Dread and Despair. He rolls two hits. Quadratic uh, roll zero. Presses. One hit. One hit back. Doesn't press anymore. Yeah. And Musters and Iron Hills. Now he attacks Iron Hills. And he rolls three sixes so the dwarves don't get to run away and be annoying. It always, it's always like at this point, they would have to retreat to East Rune just because Dale and Vale are already occupied. So that's like pretty far away from the action at that point, but it would still be annoying that they exist, you know? Anyway. Now, Fellowship moves and is safe and plays Worn with Soren Toil. Then we attack Dale. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess that. Yeah, so attacking Dale here. Um, after he liberates it, you know, assuming this army wins, which he probably should, then he'll be able to muster in here, unless, of course, he attacks it from Woodland Realm or Erebor, which he probably will, but at least he's wasting, you know, a shadow attack to hopefully buy himself some time. So he gets a hit and doesn't get hit back, so that feels nice. Um, doesn't specify which army, so he probably should have specified which army, but he's re-rolling for leadership. Like, it, it seems probable that it's from Erebor because you'd want the leadership too, right? So... So he gets two hits. Uh, that feels pretty good. He you only know, gets one hit back. Um, and he presses and runs back to Old Forest Road. So, uh, Yep, dice successfully wasted. I think I might have just moved the Fellowship again anyway. Like, you're in reasonable health. You need speed, you know? Anyway. That all rolls. Only one more eye. Decent roll for the Free Peoples. It's also nice, it is the consolation anyway, is that after Day Without Dawn is gone, that will of the West becomes so much more valuable because you don't need to be worried about that rug getting pulled out from under you. So you can actually just leave it till the end and have the flexibility of doing anything you want in the world with it. And the Shadow Player is stuck wondering about all the different things you might do with it. Okay, so we press on attacking Erebor, which makes sense. You want to blow it up before Dane shows up. That's Daylight, gets one hit, one hit back. Yeah, we press. Ah, yeah, uh, this is kind of an annoying thing that happens in the game sometimes. If you forget to clear out the other card and then your card gets played again, then it gets stuck underneath. So the, the words down here still tell you what it is and you can still see part of it in the selected bit, but it's really, it can be kind of tricky to actually get them off of each other. So anyway, it's a sudden strike. So he rolls one ahead of time. He misses and Ari gets his one six. And there's one hit back. So, so that feels nice having that all cleaned up anyway. Uh, okay, so there comes an elite in Orthanc, I guess just to... Yeah, I mean, he's got these three musters, and what else are you going to do? So you might as well... <coughs> excuse me. Bit of a cold. Uh, might as well bring on another elite to Fords of Ice. And, oh, but wait, no, this is already a full 10 army stack, so that's a little... Eh, like, you're still better off bringing in those elites, because if you have nothing better to do with those mustard dice anyway. Okay, in goes File of Gladriel. Mustering out some more elites in Northank. Drawing a card. Yep, that seems reasonable. And we might be looking at a turn 7 military victory, because all he needs to do is step on Pilar gear, and then hit the Helm's Deep button. So that takes 1, 2, 3... Attacks, and he has four if he uses a ring on the muster, which I think he will. Otherwise, I think he would have just mustered another elite North Ank with that muster. The downside is the leadership value is not strong with Fords of Isen right now. Uh, so maybe he's actually going to use a ring to m move around leadership and have, you know, more Nazgul with Fords of Isen. That would feel that would feel better to me anyway. Fellowship moves. It's safe. Attack comes deep. Oh, he's also, after he attacked Rohan, he could also bring in the mouth this turn because all free people nations will be at war. So an early mouth feels good too if you don't feel like rushing and trying to win this turn. Okay, so we muster in Carrick. Now we use the ring. Yeah, yeah, he's using it to pivot leadership, which makes sense. I see. Okay, he's coming out to fight for either Pelargir. Yeah, yeah, so they're discussing the rule. Uh, you... The Elrond ability specifically can't be used on the Will of the West, but a Will of the West can turn into any other die. So he can use the Elrond Vilia ability here, but he would need to commit to changing it to an H and then use the Elrond ability to recover it as an H. So he wouldn't have a Will of the West anymore. He'd have an H after this. Yeah, 
I talk about it for a bit and <laughs> and it comes up that Roy Subs describes it as a bit of a weak spot in the rules, which is which is fair. It's it, I, I feel for the makers of this game. It's such a huge, complicated game. It's it's really hard to show everything clearly and in the right spot because in different spots, you know, people will want it to address different things. So it's it's just yeah, it's tricky to make everything accessible for everyone. Anyway. Okay, so we're thinking about what to do. Okay, we're bringing a big pile of regulars to Dale. No, we're thinking about it. Yeah, it's always tricky with these endgame things. I mean, we say endgame. It's turn seven, and the Fellowship is still three steps from Mordor. Like, this feels pretty over to me at this point. Okay, so he attacks Woodland Realm. Ooh, I think. Yeah, yeah, just what Ari's saying here. Like, he really should have left someone behind in Erebor, because then he could go ahead and attack the Woodland Realm army here to bully it off of the Stronghold. But now if he does that, they can retreat to Withered Heath and just walk into Erebor and reclaim it. So if he'd left even one regular in there, then he'd be fine. But uh, yeah, it's easy to miscalculate sometimes about these things. Anyway, he uh, brings the armies over and decides to let... I think, I think that's a reasonable choice. Probably the best one, actually. Um, just letting Ari have his one shot at taking Woodland Realm because he's still going to need two sixes on four dice and then he can press a couple rounds. But if he gets hit back, like that's not going to be a lot of dice anyway. So let's see. He does have a charge he could use though. So that would help. Oh, it'd be so much better if he had a companion and could play Mighty Attack. Like one guaranteed hit when a small army is trying to take out a small army in a stronghold. That's very influential. Oh, and we're going to move the Fellowship instead, which uh, you know, I guess that makes sense because he gets his first turn next turn anyway, so he could still hopefully roll an H and attack with it then. He needs to keep the Fellowship moving right now. So. Okay, so Fellowship moves, gets hit. Oh, it goes Legolas. Makes sense. Oh, cool! Okay, so he had alternate Gimli too. So he took Legolas as a casualty and then was able to use Gimli's guide ability and split him to the Woodland Realm army. That's really cool. So now Mighty Attack will work for him next turn. Oh, that's cool. That's really, really cool. Okay. Then he... It's a new Hobbit, this guy. Uh, this does still feel very much in... Um, what do you call it? Free people's favor, but it... Uh, but that, uh, sorry, Shadow Player's favor, but but that was a cool part. Cool play, for sure. And the Shadow Knight's oblige, um, obliged to roll four eyes again. So a good turn for moving, not a fantastic turn for, you know, mustering or reclaiming uh, as far as the dice go for Grim. Uh, so now he attacks Woodland Realm, which makes a lot of sense. I think if it was me, I would play no quarter and hope I roll a six on those five dice because the extra hit then, then that's the two hits you need. And that's great. If you don't roll any sixes, then, and then you can press and play Mighty Attack or it's tough. Because if you don't roll that six, then it's devastating. So I guess you could play charge and hope for two sixes. Or charge, hope for one, then press, then play mighty attack. That could work too. I think either way, I think you have decent odds of taking it now. But anyway. Uh, so he leads with mighty attack anyway and uh, hopes for one six on the other four dice. Which he might get. He doesn't get. That's a bummer. But, oh, well, still one hit. Feels good. Zero hits back from the two orcs. So that's, that's subpar luck. Uh, two dice at five, it's a bit over 50% odds of getting hit. Like, it's not astronomically bad, but that still feels bad. Um, yeah, so the problem with opening with Mighty Attack is now neither charge no, nor, nor no quarter make as much sense anymore. So I think I would have led with one of those two. But uh, All he needs is one six on five dice, though. So, And he gets it. He gets his one six. And he does not roll a hit back. So that, that went very well. Uh, that, that feels good for sure. Uh, so let's try it again. That's uh, Besiege Woodland Realm again. Uh, so he uses a different die for it. Uses the H to attack instead. Okay, so in comes some extra Smeagol tiles. That always helps. Okay, we switch out the Witch King. I think that makes a lot of sense. Oh, right. This, this happens to me sometimes when it's replaying. So normally you just press space and it keeps playing. But when it exchanges the Witch King, it gets stuck. Like every time I hit space, it just keeps blinking the Witch King over and over again. So I have to actively unpause, like pause, and then restart playing the 
the replay file every time. It's really weird. Anyway, so like that. Okay. Uh, fellowship moves again because yeah it's it's time to be in mordor it's really really time to be in mordor like you're praying that these sieges hold and that you get to mordor so anyway so we move they get hit and there's a smeagol so that that feels good uh, helm deep relentless assault against ent rage it is a strong army in helm's deep there's hope here for sure anyway so he takes one hit and rolls just the one six so that's you know not amazing and then four hits back so that's that's a very that is not a great start um, are they going to remember to take the hit for Helm's Deep? Helm's Deep didn't take their hit right now. Did you take the hit? I thought it was 3 2, two already. Yeah, it was 3 2, two. I hope they remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay, I got it. Okay, so that's the Fellowship moving again. They get hit again. There's two. Takes a random, and it's being Oh, that feels bad. Ah. Uh, like at the same time, it feels bad eating too much corruption, but at the same time, like you had three Smeagol tiles in there, you know? Like it feels bad watching them go away. Oh, on the plus side, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Smeagol left. Oh, this. Okay, this was pretty good. Because this way, if it was a Hobbit, great, he gets to separate it. If it was Smeagol, he could still choose another casualty and then split that Hobbit to Fangorn. And then next time, he'll be able to play Ents. So he could. Uh, the Shadow Player can muster an elite in Orthanc, and then it's roughly 50-50 odds about whether you kill him or not. But that's still that's still pretty good. Oh, no, wait. No, he didn't put him in Fangorn. Where'd he go? Did he go to Osgiliath? Oh, he went to Osgiliath instead. No, oh, okay. Never mind. We draw a character card instead. So let's see. He's on seven movement right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he's just barely getting into Mordor right now. And we know that he has cruel weather. So does he move the extra time just to be sure? Or is he going to get bit by that? Uh, so here comes the alternate mouth. Yeah, I think alternate mouth makes sense. Just because you only have two sieges you need to finish. And then, you know, step on one point. So uh, he's he can be really good. Especially for when you just have a pile of regulars for helping accelerate those. Oh, he doesn't move again. Oh, that's tragic. That's very tragic. You poor person. <laughs> oh, that's that feels bad because sometimes you gotta risk it. You know, like the fellowship isn't in great health anymore. It's just Mary at two corruption and moving a third time against four dice when you're going to get revealed into a stronghold feels like, you know, you're signing up for some pain anyway. But getting delayed a whole turn is also a lot of pain. It's yeah, tough stuff. Okay, so away goes Gothmogs die anyway. I know the plus side to having Taramon still in play is now, you know, finding a Rakai is an option for something to play. So that helps. Okay, so Fellowship moves. <laughs> Congratulations to the Fellowship. They're officially in Mordor. Uh, there's nothing can stop them now. Okay, so in comes an Elite for more Thank. Oh, does he have Shadows Gathered too? He does. Oh, that's such a cool combo. Okay, so he could like muster three times in Orthanc and then put, hit the Shadows Gather button and then hit the Fighting Urukai button. Oh, that's so good. That feels so, so good. Okay, so he starts mustering up in Rohan. That makes sense. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. I was wondering if he was going to specifically put that army in the Fords of Isid just to mess with him, just so that he couldn't Shadows Gather that army over. So it would take two attacks instead of one Palantir to move that army over. But mustering up another elite is is also, you know, a, a pretty solid common sense option. Oh, okay, we're not doing... Okay, no, he's uh, he wants this army to be in range so he can also Shadows Gather it to Woodland Realm to bring in the extra reinforcements. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, so I will go alone. Okay, now we're now we're coming for Saruman. Thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. So Mary is now sitting in Fangorden and threatening some nasty Ent shenanigans, which is a big deal because then he won't be able to play... Oh, no, you got to play the end card right. Oh, no, wait, no, he has no end card anymore. He used it as a combat card. Oh, no, he does have another end card, though. He picked up another one. Okay. Oh, interesting. But he tries help unlooked for against Helm's Deep, which helps because, like, the Shadow Army can only roll one die because there's still a full five units in there. So, so if you get lucky anyway, this could be a real pain in the butt for Shadow. Um, so no card, no card. Quadratic gets one hit. That feels nice. Um, or you should get a reroll for that. Yeah, there it is. Okay, and he misses. Um, press stay. No card, no card. One hit. Not a hit. Ah, oh, that yeah, just like it's so frustrating slowly bleeding out units in these stupid matches. One hit. One hit. Okay, at least he gets a hit back this time. Press stay. 
no hits, no hits. <laughs> okay, so they come to terms of pressing and no and no carding, um, which makes sense. No hits, one hit. Luck has turned for. Oh no, he gave up and ran away. Okay, I guess since there were no elites to bring into the stronghold anymore, he officially didn't find it that scary anymore uh, for that army to join up and wanted to not bleed out any more units this way. So, okay, now he attacks Helm's Deep again. Makes sense. Now he plays the end card to get rid of Saruman, which is very good timing because now he can't play Fighting Urukai. So. Uh, so now he uses the Mouth ability, of course, to attack Woodland Realm. Swarm of Bats means he gets two hits, uh, one hit back, um, and the free press from the Mouth. He plays, they are terrible, that makes sense. Uh, only one hit, that's a bit bad luck. No hits back. And now we attack Polar Gear. I'm a little surprised he doesn't go after Helm's Deep. Maybe he's waiting to see if he has another chance to conveniently reinforce them. I don't know. Okay, so we attack Polar Gear. No hits, no hits. The army retreats to Asgiliath. That makes perfect sense. Okay, so still in Shadow's favor, but remarkably, he's managed to hold on, uh, despite the cruel weather and despite the... Uh, you know, general bad luck of strongholds getting blown up relatively easily. Uh, the retaking Woodland Realm was cool. And the shenanigans in Rohan were also pretty cool. Um, so there's three red tiles in there, though. But it's still, like, it's a fairly big hunt pool, though. So, you know, stuff can happen. Notably, there's no Galadriel ability to turn away a nasty eye, though. And Fellship said, you know, down to Gollum with one corruption. Oh, and we shall get it is in play. So that's neat. Okay. Um, okay, so we're finishing off Woodland Realm. Yeah, we get our 1 6, one hit back. That's that. Mustering up some more in Rohan. Mustering up some more in Orthanc. No, okay, pivoting Nazgul leadership. I'm surprised he didn't bring more leadership over to Helm's Deep since it's down to four now. But maybe four is all he feels like he needs. And I guess he wants this army to be strong enough to beat off uh, Aragorn and Boromir here. He musters up some more. There's a North Hank. Okay, now he's getting in the way to stop a Shadow Scouter play. Now he's doing that. Which, of course, he doesn't have anymore, but it's still, you know, blocking reinforcements anyway. Okay, we do some mustering. I'm not sure what the plan is. Like, why move this guy to Dagger Lab? I guess just for kicks? Question mark. And like, why move these regulars down here? That doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, like, I, I would just get to work on attacking Helm's Deep if it was me. Yeah. Okay, a three. Not using We Shall Get It. I think that makes sense. Like, a three against Gollum is uh, pretty good. Like, you definitely wouldn't want to redraw into a blue tile anyway, so. Okay. I guess he wanted a big enough army to fight off for the Vizen and then... <laughs> Sorry. And then join up with the army at home, Steve. Okay. Um, Fellowship moves again, and now it's a three-stop, so that, that hurts a lot. Uh, that... Okay, um, I guess something, yeah, something about it. Yeah, they had to reconnect. Oh, that feels bad, because if he had drawn, you know, like a not that devastating tile, like a zero or a one, or even better, one of the blue tiles, he would actually have a really good shot at finishing next turn. Uh, especially, you know, with six dice to use anyway. Like, especially if he picked up Challenge of the King and played it, that would help. Anyway. Um, they're... I was wondering if this, was this is an easy thing to overlook. They're playing Fighting Urukai, even though Saruman is eliminated. Um, you're not supposed to be able to play this if Saruman isn't in play. But oh well, it's easy to miss. Um, here we go. <laughs> so plus they plus a desperate battle, and not a single hit is played. Uh, okay, funny stuff. Um, okay, so on to round two. He picks up Corsairs, which is a nice card. Not great for the event right now, but uh, Deadly Strife is certainly can be really strong. Ideally, you'd like the opposing army to be a bit weaker than that before you play Deadly Strife. Okay, Charge against they are terrible, so the pre 
misses. And three hits from Shadow Player, so that helps. That helps a lot. Against two from Free People's Player. Now two. I think now the Deadly Strife is coming out, probably. Yep, there's the Deadly Strife. And he gets four hits. So, yep, that's that. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, some late drama twist with remembering that shield wall blocks a hit, but then remembering that there's four hits anyway. So it uh, takes it out anyway. So that's a little bit of bummer that, uh, you know, that, that a rule was, was missed on the final play of the game. But that being said, like with the fellowship being in this bad shape, you know, at seven corruption on step one, uh, it's unlikely anyway that the fellowship was going to win next turn. And even without fighting Urukai, like there were some strong combat cards here, so they were probably going to win anyway. So anyway, um, a good game, I think. Uh, well played on both parts. Very well played with the retaking of Woodland Realm and the help unlooked for, and and just good military keeping your foot on the gas to to get to ten points. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, let's take a look. See at the statistics. That was fun. Oof. Okay, so so zero and minus two for shadow combat, which isn't... Oh, no, wait, these are switched. Right, 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 this is wrong. Okay, so zero and minus two for free peoples, which is only slightly below average, but then for the shadow player, minus eight on sixes and minus six on fives. That's so bad. That, that's probably why we're on a turn 10 right now, huh? Yeah. Um, for action rolls, all these are pretty average. Yeah, there's one minus three. Everything else is either plus two or, uh, you know, between one to two, so nothing too extreme. Um, yeah, good stuff. Always exciting to go to a game three. So yeah, looking forward to bringing you the next video, uh, probably tomorrow. Have a good one.